This is Dina Marie from Our Lady of Peace Retreat with a Franciscan moment. During the 50-day feast of Easter, we're invited to celebrate the incredible outpouring of God's divine mercy and his abundant gift of eternal life. The daily devotion to pray the chaplet of divine mercy is one powerful way we can cry out for God's mercy upon us and the whole world. But how have Christians over the centuries approached this awesome message of God's mercy? And what can we learn from the saints regarding God's greatest attribute? Well, with me today to discuss our beloved St. Francis and his message of divine mercy is Franciscan friar, Father Dan Petit. Good morning, Father Dan. It's always great to have you joining us. Well, good morning, Dean Marie, and uh, a blessed Easter to you. Absolutely. He is risen. Alleluia. It's, we spent a lot of time in Lent and now we get the 50 day feast to really recognize God's great mercy. Now, we're going to talk about St. Francis and this message of divine mercy, but I want to just ask you, because the last time we talked, you were going to be going to Alaska on a parish mission, actually during the Lenten season. But I want to hear a little bit about Go from Texas to Alaska, it's a little bit of a diverse environment. And then the people right. coming on on mission, these seasons of the church are these invitations. I think of God's mercy. Come to the church, come to a mission, come to encounter well, Jesus. Just give us a little a little follow up on that parish mission in Alaska. Well, it was uh, it was a delightful trip. Um, first time to Alaska. I, I went from Texas. Now, the state itself is three times the size of Texas, so it's massive. And I flew into Anchorage, and when I got there, this is the end of March now, you know, about a month ago or so, and it was still just blanketed in snow. And um, they still had to plow because we got more snow. And... Um, the mountains, I flew into Anchorage, and of course, anyone that's been there knows you have these beautiful mountains all around the city of Anchorage. And um, uh, of course, seasonally, one of the differences, I mean, for example, today, as I sit here, I mean, we're looking at 92 degrees in Texas. Well, so I left when I did leave, even at the end of March, I think it was about, it was close to 70 and I had my winter coat in tow, so that when I got off the plane at the other end, it was 20 degrees, I could put it on, you know, so right. there, there was some of that uh, geographical uh, sort of uh, weather sort of difference, but the people up there were just so um, very inspiring. Um, they, they have a different kind of a lifestyle, certainly. I mean, for me, growing up in Minnesota, we always fought around say, February, March, what we call cabin fever. Well, for them, the whole winter season is almost like fighting cabin fever because they only have five hours of light in December. And that that can be tough if, you, if you're living um, without the sun and even the five hours could be overcast and dull and, mm -hmm. and, and the like. So it, it, it challenges uh, just humanly your, your uh, psychology, but spirituality up there i found uh, a very deep faith among the people at uh, the parish i was at in eagle river which is about 10 miles outside of anchorage and it was a delightful mission up there yeah and just you know i typically what happens at missions that i've been at is you've got your preaching on a daily basis Typically, the daily mass is available and then confessions. And I know for some people coming to a mission, it may have been a while or a long while since they've been to confession. Give me a sense, just as people are coming into the church for this experience, you know, what are they hungering for? What are they missing? What do they need in their spiritual life? You know, what I found, and I found this consistently even uh, here in Texas, well, probably throughout my ministry and even in myself, um, the thing that people are hungering for is to know the mercy of Christ, but we don't seem to be able to get past the justice that the commandments meet out to us because uh, it's almost like there's a lot of people, I think, in the Catholic Church that are living as though they're still Old Testament man or woman before Christ came. Um, because they're, I mean, the Ten Commandments are important. I don't mean to say that. And of course, Jesus did say, 
he didn't come to abolish the commandments. But all the commandments do, if that's all you have, is accuse you of falling short. Mm. And if you don't have Christ, there's no way around that because all you're left with is the justice of what's due to you, which is not very pleasant. So the mission was all attempt to, what I was attempting to do is get people on board with faith in what Christ has accomplished for us by dying upon the cross, which is the forgiveness of sins. We don't deserve it. There, It isn't something, I mean, especially as uh, men and women in the United States, we feel as though we've got to earn it. You can't earn this. It's over already. You've already failed in following the Ten Commandments. Now the only way to get in is his mercy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what I was trying to help people understand is he loves you. That's why he died on the cross and he wants to help you get into his kingdom. He's not like playing cat and mouse with you. He really does want you to be close to him, you know. And so as a result of that, we had the mission was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the evening. And I spoke for about an hour. And then we there was three or four of us priests that heard confessions all three nights for an hour and a half to two hours. And they mm -hmm. were very substantial. You know, people were just responding to this mercy of Christ to come to confession. Um, and it was delightful and really uh, a testimony to the to the Holy Spirit at work in their hearts that they did come. You know. How beautiful. I'm talking with Father Dan Petit, Franciscan Friar, in this beautiful season of Easter, the season of God's mercy. But, you know, as you mentioned that, Father Dan, I think about really mercy. If we're giving mercy, it's for somebody who doesn't deserve it, right? Because right. otherwise, it's possibly justice. But if we think about, am I going to give mercy to the enemy who has offended me? That's hard to do. You, so there's something we, about mercy it's it's big it is big it's it's very big it's as big as the heart of god himself uh which is massive it's an ocean of mercy you know like saint faustina really received that from christ and herself went through this journey of faith to embrace the magnitude of this mercy i mean starting out in the beginning of the diary you do get a sense like she's still pretty fearful and she's a steady, steadily gaining greater confidence in this massive ocean of mercy into which our sins just are are ob obliterated. Uh, as far as the east is from the west, so far as you cast away our sins. So yeah, I mean, it really is, uh, like you say, this vast mercy is as grand and as great and as massive as the heart of God himself. Right, uh, right. You know, and you mentioned St. Faustina, and obviously in these recent times, St. Faustina, the diary, Pope St. John Paul II, you know, we associate, at least I do, in learning about divine mercy in the last 20 years, I associate the message of, of Faustina, St. John Paul II, uh, of kind of giving us this message. But the message has always been around, uh, even the time of the apostles. But take us 800 years earlier to St. Francis and his life and, and walking on the road with the friars. How, how did he approach God's mercy? Well, he was, he was very conscious, as we do need to be, of um, the justice of God that was due to him. Because Francis himself lived a rather uh, wild youth, you might say, um, and he did he did the first twenty years of his life uh, spend most of it in just uh, he was he was a prodigal son basically, and uh, did undergo massive conversion in twelve oh six. You know he's born eleven eighty two, so by this time he's about uh, in his early twenties, and he has this conversion. Well. As a result of that conversion, he was the one most conscious of how unworthy he was of all these blessings he received. In fact, one time he was going down the road and he saw a poor man just sitting in the in the ditch. And he was just laid out, you know, from just his poverty and his his life. And Francis said, this man would be twice the man I am if he received the graces I received. 
And it, it's that awareness that he had um, that really did lead him to begin to trust in that grace and mercy and that forgiveness and eventually became the saint. See, this is what does it. You is faith in the love of God and you start to get that momentum to the point where you realize I don't deserve any of this and yet he's so freely giving it. And when you embrace that, you become a saint. And that's what he did. You know, he began to change his life. He converted, he abandoned his life of sin and began to walk in the gift of the Holy Spirit at work in him that eventually, you might say, weaned him off of the life of sin and put him onto the life of grace. Mm. And that is God's abundant mercy given out for us. Beautiful season in this time of Easter to continue to pray and to pray for those hardened hearts. And I love the chaplet of divine mercy. We pray it every day on this radio station. And, and I pray many people do pray it on a daily basis. I want to talk more about this divine mercy. How do we approach it in our own lives when we see the world around us that is full of sin? How do we wrestle with that and invite God to really bless us? Um, but we are coming up to a break, Father. So I want to take a quick break and then we'll continue our conversation in the next half hour. Okay, thank you. 